Hi everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today because I'm going to get real with you about my diet. Now back in April, I posted a video in which I talked about my switch from the paleo style of eating, which is heavy meat, vegetables, and some fruit, to vegan plant-based. And I'd read all of this stuff and seen some documentaries about how vegan plant-based was the best diet for you. And in my past, I was a vegetarian and vegan for five years before I went to paleo. And I'm going to link a video below, which was the video that I did maybe two years ago called The Food Monster in which I explain my kind of addictive relationship with food. Not kind of, I am totally addicted to food. It is one of my several addictions. I quit wine 22 years ago and that was the big one. And then I've been dealing with food on and off and all manner of addictions except drugs. I don't do drugs, thank the Lord. I know if I tried anything, I would be off and running and it would not be good. And if you also suffer from kind of an addictive personality, then please don't beat yourself up. I have done lots and lots of research over the years about addictions and it really is true that it is a disease. And I know that sounds crazy and I never used to believe that before I did all this research, but there are certain people and I am one of them and maybe you're one of them too that get addicted to various substances. On a scale of one to 10 in terms of addictive behaviors with food, I am a 10. Going back to that first video, that first video was about my switch from vegetarianism to paleo. And the reason I did that, I actually switched to the paleo autoimmune diet, which is meat, veggies, and some fruit and no dairy. That's the autoimmune part. And the reason I switched from vegetarianism at that point was because I had arthritis in a lot of joints in my body and I needed that inflammation to go down. And amazingly, when I switched to paleo, the inflammation just left my body and I was totally pain-free. It was absolutely wonderful. But then fast forward a couple years, I started to cheat and be able to do some carbs and the joint pain did not come back for me. And so I started to think I should go back to vegan plant-based because I'd done that before. I'd read a lot of information about the benefits of being vegan plant-based. I'd seen some documentaries. And so around the first of the year, I switched back to vegan plant-based. And then in April, I did that video about being vegan plant-based. And since that time, you all have asked me to do a video about what I eat in a day and that kind of thing. But amazingly, pretty much right after that video, I realized that I could not tolerate the vegan plant-based. And I'll tell you why. The vegan plant-based is very, very high carb. I started to eat a lot of tortillas and a lot of beans and a lot of rice. In fact, I think I mentioned in that video, which I will link below, the switch from paleo to vegan plant-based. My favorite thing to eat was like a big bowl of brown rice and beans and all these veggies and this Thai peanut sauce on top. It was wonderful, but what I found happening on that very high carb diet is I craved food all of the time. That first video was called The Food Monster and my food monster came out with a vengeance. The minute I would finish one meal, I would be thinking about the next meal. And I am gluten-free, but I started really liking gluten-free crackers and that kind of thing. And I just couldn't get enough. And so in May of this year, just a month after doing that video about my switch to plant-based, I went back to paleo because I could not take those food cravings. And immediately when I started paleo, my joints started feeling good again. And actually when I became vegan plant-based, my joints started to hurt again. But the minute I became paleo, all of a sudden that inflammation was gone and I just felt like my old self again. And I really did not have those intense food cravings. Well, fast forward to about a month ago and I was having lunch with a friend and afterwards I was coughing. So I took a cough drop and I said, would you like one? They taste really good. And she said, no, there's sugar and I don't eat sugar. And I'm like, oh no, they're not sugar. They're they were probably artificial sweetener. And she said, well, I don't have artificial sweetener either. And I thought, oh my gosh, how do you live life without artificial sweetener? Since I've gone on paleo, of course you're avoiding sugar, but I always used a lot of stevia in my iced tea. I couldn't really imagine doing iced tea without that sweet taste to it. I really did crave that. And so she told me that for the past year, she's been on a program of eating called Bright Line Eating and that she had lost 60 pounds. And I found that hard to believe because it didn't look like like she was 60 pounds heavier before, but she's a tall person, so whatever. And after she told me about this eating plan, I thought it would really, really help me. And I ordered the book off of Amazon and I'll put the link below. And I don't have the book to show you because I got it on my Kindle. And I read it from cover to cover almost immediately. It's a very easy read. It's a very simple program, but my, is it effective. The whole basis of the program is that some of us are very addicted to two things, sugar and flour. And Susan Thompson wrote the book 
and she has a history of pretty intense addictions, like she was addicted to meth and cocaine, and then food, and she wiped out the meth and cocaine just past college, and then she started dealing with the food addiction by going to 12-step programs and a full range of diets, as we all do, and she realized that she was very addicted to food, and as she did more research, she realized that sugar and flour have something in common with cocaine and heroin. All four of those substances, when synthesized, when processed, come down to a white powdery substance. Cocaine does, heroin does, sugar does, and flour does. And actually, in the brain, in terms of brain chemistry, sugar and flour are highly addictive, and once we start them, if we have these addictive tendencies, we are off to the races and we can't stop. And I have always known that I've had a problem with sugar and flour, an addictive problem. And if you think you may have this type of problem too, I'm going to put a link to Susan Thompson's book below called Bright Line Eating, and then also a link to her little free quiz that you can take to see where you are on a food addiction scale from zero to 10. When I took that quiz, I was a 10. And basically what you're doing is you look at your worst eating time in your whole life and you say during that time, was I a zero to a 10, where was I? And it was definitely a 10. And most of my life, I'm in an eight through 10. Now, some of you who are at a two, you're the people that can say, well, why don't you just have one cookie? Just have one. And for those of you who are a 10, like I am, you say, OMG, I can't have even one bite of a cookie because then it immediately becomes one cookie, three cookies, half of the bag, maybe the whole bag until I'm practically sick with so many cookies. That's what those of us who are a 10 on the food addiction scale experience. And those of you who are a two or a three and can like have a bite of a candy bar and save the rest for later, you don't understand what we deal with. And looking around America, I think a lot of women out there are dealing with food addictions. And one interesting thing about food addictions is if you have them, chances are you're addicted to other things as well. Alcohol is sugar. That's why I quit wine 22 years ago. I really could not handle it. Spending can be a problem. Gambling can be a problem. Cigarettes can be a problem. And all of that is linked to kind of the addictive biochemistry. That's at the very heart of it all. Well, I have been on Brightline Eating now for about the past six weeks, and I truly love it. And what Brightline itself means is that you know how they always have the phrase, lines in the sand that you will not cross? These are bright lines in the sand that you will not cross. And they're just several simple rules that you follow. And I'm amazed, but I've been following all but one of them, and I choose not to follow the last one, and I'll tell you about that. But the first line is, you only eat at meals with no snacks. No snacking at all, just three meals a day. And it was funny because the first day I did this, I realized, OMG, I don't think I've ever had a day where I didn't snack. And in fact, sometimes I would get home from work and I would start on some nuts and it could become chips or gluten-free crackers. And before you know it, before dinner, I'd eaten enough snacks to, to actually be a dinner and then I'd eat a second dinner. So it was a very foreign idea to me not to ever snack. And speaking of foreign, when I went to Paris recently before that, I did some research on Parisian women and how they stay so thin. And one of the ways they stay thin is that they don't eat between meals. They don't snack. And that idea was kind of intriguing to me at the time, but I thought, oh my gosh, I'm such a snacker. That won't work for me. Well, anyway, six weeks ago when I started this program, I cut out the snacks and it was three meals a day. And the second bright line is that no sugar and no flour of any type. No sugar and no flour of any type. That means no cakes, pies, cookies, they have sugar and flour. No pizza. And pizza is one of the most highly addicted things known to man. And I have to admit, I do kind of miss it. But look at that crust. It's totally flour. And in terms of added condiments to your food, like barbecue sauce, ketchup, something like that, you need to look at the list of ingredients. And if sugar is in the top four ingredients, you just don't eat it. And quite honestly, that bright line was not difficult for me because I was on the paleo diet and there's no sugar and flour in that diet either, so that wasn't a problem. Now, the next bright line was kind of interesting for me, and that is no artificial sweeteners at all, and that was a super tough one for me. As those of you who have followed my channel may know, last year I talked quite a bit about the fact that I was kind of addicted to Diet Dr. Pepper's, and I wouldn't even say kind of addicted. Last year I got to where I was drinking five or six Diet Dr. Pepper's a day, I really wasn't drinking water. It was just all those chemicals, all that artificial sweetener. And on January 1 of this year, about eight months ago, I totally quit Diet Dr. Pepper and I have not looked back. I have not had one. 
And those of you who are a two on the addictive scale would go, oh Beth, every now and then you can have a diet Dr. Pepper. I have one a week or even one a day. It's not a problem. Well, it's not a problem for you because you're a two on the addiction scale. Those of you who are a 10 on the addiction scale, you understand why one diet Dr. Pepper leads to 10, which was my case. So I'm so happy I did not pick that up again. And one day at a time, I will never have that first Diet Dr. Pepper because it will lead to many, many, many Diet Dr. Peppers. And even though I didn't do Diet Dr. Peppers, when I would do iced tea, I would use a lot of stevia. In my mind, I was thinking, oh, it's a natural sweetener, so it's not as bad as the aspartame and all those other kind of things, the sweet and low. But actually, any of those artificial sweeteners produce the same insulin rush response in your body as sugar and they fuel the need for more sugars. And so quitting the artificial sweeteners goes a long way to helping your body normalize out and helping to calm down that food addiction process. So that's another bright line I follow, which is no artificial sweeteners. And I want to point out, and I should have told you this at first, but you can really follow any style of eating under the bright line program. You can be vegetarian, you can be vegan, you can be paleo as I am. It basically takes whatever plan you want to follow and it establishes some bright line rules that take it to the next level, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, the last bright line I choose not to follow, and that is weighing and measuring up your food. And I know where Susan Thompson gets this because at various points in my life, I've gone to Overeaters Anonymous and they have this weighing and measuring of the food. And if I needed to lose a lot of weight, then I would definitely weigh and measure my food because all of us with the food issue, we can say, oh, you know, this whole plate of spaghetti is a serving when that is really not true or this whole steak is a six ounce portion, which it really isn't. So if you have an issue with weight loss and you need to lose weight, you really do need to follow that weighing and measuring of your food. But for me, I only needed to lose two or three pounds, which I did almost immediately on the Bright Line eating program because I wasn't eating between meals and I wasn't eating sugar and flour but I don't need to lose any more weight and I don't want to become that obsessed with food. And the name of Susan Thompson's book is Bright Line Eating, The Science of Living Happy, Thin and Free. And I have to say, it is so totally true. Once you're able to get those addictive food substances out of your life, you feel happy, you get thinner and you feel free. And that freedom is absolutely wonderful and it just lifts your mood and makes you feel in control of yourself for a change because those of us that suffer from eating addictions never really feel free of the tyranny that food holds over us. We're thinking about food all the time. We're planning our next meal. We're planning our next diet. We're obsessing about food. And I totally get that if that's where you are right now. And if anything I'm saying resonates with you one way or the other, I hope you share your comments in the comment section below the video and I hope you'll go to the link on Amazon and check out Susan Thompson's book. It is wonderful. She knows what she's talking about and if you have a food addiction problem, it really does work. Well, thank you for watching my video and if you're interested in all things that help us live a better second half, I hope you subscribe and when you click that little bell, you'll be notified of my future videos and if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be great too. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and this is the Miracles Now card deck from Gabrielle Bernstein. Let's see what Gabrielle has for us to think about for today. Ooh, ooh, this is, this is scary because I just overshared. When I've overshared, I simply say, wait, why am I talking? When I've overshared, I simply say, wait, why am I talking? Oh my, just when I was drawing this card, I thought, Lord, Give me a card that will be relevant to this video. And ladies, I hope I have not overshared with you today because sometimes I've heard YouTubers talk about their addictions and I think, oh my gosh, that's too much information. I really don't want to know. But when I started this channel long ago, I think I may have forgotten this mission some and I'd really like to get back to it. But my big mission was to help other women through the mistakes I have made in my life. And I know that sounds crazy, but dealing with the food addiction and other types of addictions, I have had to learn a lot of life the hard way. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I feel good because I've really triumphed over a lot of the areas that I had problems with. And you all, life is just a school where we have certain problems and then we learn from them. And all through life, I kept waiting for perfection to appear and it never did. There was always another problem, another issue, another hill to climb. And so friends, just for today, if we find ourselves oversharing, Let's just say, wait, why am I talking and shut up? And with that, I'll let you go and I'll see you in my next video.